We know him as king of Troy, a just and righteous ruler who stood against the legendary Achaean fleet of one thousand ships. But who was really Priam, and what's his story before he took the reins at Ilion? In this episode, we talk about the early life and reign of Priam of Troy. Priam's birth name was Podarches. He was born in Troy, one of many children of the Trojan king Laomedon. Podarches grew up on the royal court together with most of his brothers and sisters. His eldest brother, however, Tithonus, had left Troy as he was taken by Eos, the goddess of the dawn, in order to be her lover. Troy was already among the most flourishing cities at the time, with its magnificent walls said to have been built by gods Poseidon and Apollo. According to the legend, when gods finished building Troy's walls, King Laomedon, not knowing their true identity, refused to pay them and triggered their divine wrath. While Apollo sent a plague upon the Trojans, Poseidon released a sea monster that snatched away people along the coast. Desperate Laomedon consulted the oracles, who told him that the curse would stop if he sacrificed one of his daughters to the monster. The desperate king ultimately exposed his daughter Hercione by fastening her to the rocks near the sea. Fortunately for Laomedon, at this time, a band of warriors led by Heracles was returning home after fighting the Amazons and decided to make a stop at Troy. When the famed hero saw what was happening, he offered Laomedon to kill the monster and save his daughter, on the condition that the Trojan king compensates him with the divine horses that Laomedon's predecessors had received from Zeus. After Laomedon agreed, Heracles and his warriors killed the monster and managed to rescue Hercione at the last minute. Laomedon, however, did not honor his end of the bargain and refused to give up his horses. After threatening the king, angry Heracles ultimately left in order to continue his journey and it looked like Laomedon was finally free of all curses and misfortunes. However, just like feuding with gods was never a good idea, being on bad terms with the favorite son of Zeus was far from a wise decision. Heracles was notorious for bringing revenge upon those who did him injustice, and Laomedon was no exception. After some time, upon completing one of his ongoing ventures, Heracles decided to return to Troy, but this time not as an ally. The hero raised a fleet of 18 ships and sailed to Ilion in order to punish the Trojan king. After a brief siege, Heracles' troops suffered some casualties but ultimately breached the walls and entered the city. Subsequently, Heracles killed Laomedon and most of his sons that were present. Among those that were spared was Podarches, who was saved by his sister Hercione. Heracles assigned Hercione as a war prize to his comrade Telamon, but he allowed the princess to take with her whomsoever of the captives she wanted. Hercione chose her brother Podarches, and in order to avoid him becoming a slave, she took the golden veil from her head and gave it as a ransom for Podarches' freedom. Heracles accepted the ransom and decided to end the expedition, leaving Podarches the ruler of Troy. After this event, Podarches became known as Priam, from the word Priamai, which means to buy something. Priam thus became the new king of Troy. 
His surviving brothers Lampus, Hikitaian, and Clitius joined him as members of the royal council and began policy of preserving Trojan influence in what were increasingly turbulent times. Priam had several consorts that would reportedly bear him up to 68 sons and 18 daughters. His chief wife would come from Phrygia. In order to secure a strong alliance, Priam came to terms with a Phrygian king, Dimas, who ruled the territory around the river Sangarius. Dimas's daughter, Hecuba, thus went to Troy and married Priam, becoming the Trojan queen. According to the legend, Priam and Hecuba had 19 children, the eldest of which was Hector, who was chosen as Priam's successor to the throne. His Phrygian alliance would soon lure the Trojans into a war, as King Dimas found himself in hostilities with the Amazons from the northern Asia Minor. The Grand Coalition included the Trojan forces under King Priam, but also troops from other Phrygian lands, such as Acmonia, ruled by King Migdon. It is unknown if Dimas passed away during this period, but the leadership of his army was bestowed upon his son and successor, Otreus. The decisive battle took place at the banks of the Sangarius River, with the Phrygian-Trojan coalition beating down the Amazons in decisive victory. Having secured the borders of his allies, Priam returned to Troy in triumph. What followed was a period of peace and prosperity for the Trojans, with the city of Ilion achieving great renown for its wealth. As Priam reached older age, the command of the military was passed to his son Hector. Troy was not a warlike state, so its army was mainly designed for defensive purposes. To further secure themselves, Trojans built up alliances with various neighbors, such as Thracians, Carians, Lycians, Pelasgians, and many others. Friendly relations with the Greeks on the other side of the Aegean were also crucial, as most of the Achaeans were a part of the Mycenaean-dominated coalition under powerful king Agamemnon. Trojans thus engaged in a number of diplomatic missions with the Achaeans. One of those included dispatching a Trojan delegation to Sparta, which was ruled by Agamemnon's younger brother Menelaus. For this mission, Priam sent one of his other sons and Hector's younger brother, Paris. This move would soon prove a disaster for everyone involved. Once in Sparta, young Paris met Menelaus and his wife Helen, who happened to be the most beautiful woman in the world. The Trojan prince, instead of establishing relations with his hosts, ended up abducting the Spartan queen to the shock of all parties on both sides of the Aegean Sea. What happened next was the most legendary war in all of history, a devastating ten-year-old Achaean campaign that was passed down by the generations until it was immortalized in Homer's Iliad. We're introducing the Super Tanks. The Super Thanks button allows you, the viewers, to show an extra gratitude to the channel and get your comments highlighted and noticed not only by myself, but other viewers as well. Underneath the video, you will see a heart with a dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable. Hopefully you enjoy the content. Special thanks to History with Sai, Nico, Chris Ernst, Panayotis Yanopoulos, Fred Leckie, Tim Lane, ABC Shake, Derek Wildstar, Padre91, Argiris Margaritis, Paul Sally Briggs, Labelle Olmier, Mercy and Thane, Luis Aldames, Winner Delumination and the State Care for their continuous support. This was 1XTV and we'll see you again soon.